All right. Review for Unit 2 test. So read the directions. It says write in conditional form if it's not already in it. So look at number one, two, three, four, five, and six. The only place I see the word if is one and three. But the only place I see if and then is number one. So A is done right here. That's the only one where part A is finished, the first part. Okay? Now we can underline the hypothesis and conclusion. So hypothesis follows the if, conclusion follows the then. I cannot underline and circle anything else, except maybe I can come down here and do this. Whoops. But still, I can't circle because there's no then. I need to rewrite that one. So, part B. Is the conditional true or false? If it's false, write a counterexample. So, look at the conditional statement. If you do your homework, then you can play a video game. I mean, that's just like a rule, like a parent might say. So, is it true or false? Sure, that can be true. Now notice, we're stepping it up another level here from initial lesson and the quiz. All right. So, in this case, we're actually going to say whether this is true or false, then write the converse and say true or false. But, make your life easy. If it can be true, Say true, and then no counter examples needed. So if you do your homework, then you can play a video game. That to me sounds like a very common thing that a teacher, I mean a student, wow, a parent might tell their child. So true, we don't have to call it a counter example because that's a very possible rule. Now on to C, just switch them. If you played a video game, you did your homework, then you did your homework. It says write a conditional. Then you did your homework. Now, I could go either way on this, and I'll be very flexible with creating this. You could say true. You're playing video games because you did your homework based on what your parents told you. So I would accept true. You could also say false. And just give a counter example if you want. You don't have to, but if it's possible to make it true, then say true. But if you want to say false, I had no homework. That's also a perfectly good counterexample. I'm playing games, but it's not because I did my homework. I didn't have any homework that night. So I would accept true or false on this. All rectangles have four sides. Well, notice it's not an if then statement. So first we have to do that. First thing. If a shape is a rectangle, then it has four sides. Okay, so I'm going to first underline shape is a rectangle, the hypothesis, it has four sides. Now, is that true or false? If it's a rectangle, then it has four sides. That is most definitely true. That's a requirement of a rectangle. It has to have a, it's a four-sided figure. It's a quadrilateral. So that is for sure true. We don't need a counterexample. Now we're going to do the converse, and we just switch it. If a shape is a square,
Then, sorry, I got stuck on square in my head from that last statement. If a shape has four sides, then it is a rectangle. And you can read it if you want. Now that one's going to be false. Why? It could be a rhombus. Or a trapezoid. That's of. Okay, those are two four sided shapes that are definitely not rectangles. So that proves the converse false. Okay, this one was close to being conditional, but it's missing the word then. If you want, I would be fine if you just did this. Save writing. Boom. There's my conditional. If you give me the $20, then I'll be your best friend. Again, it's one of those things, true or false. I could go either way on that. If you give me $20, I'll be your best friend. That seems like not a lot of money to be your pledge myself as your best friend. So you could say false um, and say friendship isn't based on money. You could say false, that's not enough money. Or you could just say true. Okay? I would accept either one. So friendship not based on money. I can spell, I really can, I promise. Friendship is not monetary. That would be one reason why you might say no. Okay? So either way, I would accept true or false. So the converse, we're gonna switch now. If I will be your best friend, like if I promise to be your best friend, then you give me $20. Okay, so that's the agreement. If I'll be your best friend, then you give me $20. Okay, so is that true or false? That depends on the situation. So once again, I would accept true or false, either one. As long as you can justify the false with any answer, that's fine. Okay, number four. Ms. People will email parents of all students who earn an A on, today's, on Tuesday's test. This is a little harder one. So, if Mrs. Pepo emailed parents, then they could be those students, I guess. Then the students got an A on the test. Okay, so the hypothesis is people emailed parents. Students got an A on the test. All right? That is the conditional statement. Again, this is one of those vague ones. You could say true. That makes sense. She wanted to congratulate the kids. You could say false, because there's, there's a lot of other reasons a teacher might email parents. 
right, that would be a good enough example. Just say false, teachers email parents for other reasons. Or she emailed them for failing the test. So you can go either way. Again, gonna be really flexible on this. Now, the conditional, I mean the converse, reversed. So if a student got an A on the test, then Mrs. P emailed parents. Okay. Again, you can go true or false. I would accept either. Because yes, it could happen. Or you could say she doesn't email parents of kids who get AIDS. Or they got an A, but she called the parents. Anything you wanted to, dis to disprove it. Otherwise, I would accept true also. So either one. A person practices putting will improve her golf game. So, if a person practices putting, then her Golf game improves. Okay? So, hypothesis, everything following the if to the comma, and, whoops, conclusion, everything following then to the period. All right. True or false? If a person practices, game will improve. I would say that's usually going to be a true. If you wanted to, you could say false. They just stink at golf. It's not their game. Okay? But most people would probably say that's true. Practicing makes you get better. Now the converse. If a person's golf game improves, then she practiced. Again, I would take T or F. It is very likely that they got better for practicing, but if you want to say false, it just happened by random luck, or they made a wish with a genie, or they're Harry Potter, and they cast a magic spell, whatever. But if you can go true, make your life easy. Okay, number six. If the vehicle, this is really hard sometimes to just come up with a way to make it, you know, if then. If the vehicle has two wheels, then it is a bicycle. True or false? Um, well, first off, hypothesis. I hate that. Conclusion. Next, true or false? You can say true. Yeah, if it has two wheels, it's a bicycle. You can also say false and call it a motorcycle. So you could say true or false. It's a motorcycle. Okay. I would accept either one. Now the converse, switch it. If 
It is a bicycle then it has two wheels. I was afraid I missed that S. All right, that one pretty much most definitely is true. If it's a bicycle, it has to have two wheels. Otherwise, it's a unicycle or a tricycle. Okay, there we go. Complete each conditional statement, whether it's supplementary or congruent. Remember, supplementary means 180, congruent means equal. So, two lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are equal. Same side interior, remember, for same side interior, that's going to be this one and this one, one obtuse, one acute. So, supplementary. Alternate exterior angles, just like alternate interior, they're either both acute or both obtuse. Corresponding, again, one inside, one outside, but in that case, both acute or both obtuse, so equal. All right, so draw a pair of parallel lines and a transversal. Technically, you should put the little triangles in all these, but I'm just gonna real quickly, let's just assume they're all straight because look how well I'm drawing them. Oh, that was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. There we go. So, corresponding angles. So, I'm just gonna put this one and this one. Those are equal. Alternate interior angles. Those two are equal. Linear pair, that's going to be one interior and one exterior, I'm sorry, one obtuse and one acute, which means they are supplementary. Same side interior, same thing, one acute, one obtuse, supplementary. Vertical angles, just one example, equal. Alternate exterior angles, here and here, equal. Find the value of x that will make them parallel. Well, notice that this is the same as that. They're both obtuse. So 14x plus 4 equals 130. Subtract 4, 14x equals 126. Then you're just going to take 126, divide both sides by 14. So 126 divided by 14 is 9. X equals 9. Let's look at the directions. Find the value of X. I did that. Then find the measure of the angles labeled. Well, we're going to plug 9 in right here. But since they're alternate, I mean, sorry, corresponding, they're going to end up being equal. All right, so these two angles right here, one is acute and one is obtuse. You can see that clearly, they're not the same size. Therefore, if they're not the same size, they're not equal, they must be supplementary. So x plus 71 plus x plus 131 equals 180. I'm gonna join like terms, 2x, plus 202, right, because 131 plus 71 is 202, equals 180. Now, this is the part that throws people off. When I subtract 202, I get a negative number. Now, when I divide by 2, I'm going to get x equals negative 11. This is okay. You can have x that's negative or positive. What's important is when you plug it in, you don't get a negative angle. So, negative 11 plus 71, that's 60 degrees. 131 minus 71, I'm sorry, my bad, minus 11 is 120. 
120 plus 60 is 180, so that checks out. All right, number 19. Exterior angle, exterior angle, alternating on the transversal, which means they are A, E, A, and they are equal. So therefore, negative 9 plus 7x equals 75. I'm going to add 9 to both sides and get 80, sorry, 84. 84 divided by 7 is 12. I found x. This is pretty easy. When I plug 12 in here, I'm going to get the same answer, 75 degrees. All right, number 20. Well, what we have here is we have an obtuse angle. And we have a cute little angle. Therefore, they are not going to be set equal to each other. They don't look equal. One's small, one's big. Therefore, the obtuse plus the acute add up to 180. So 113 plus 73 is 186. So I have x plus 186 equals 180. Again, when I subtract, I'm going to get a negative number, and that's okay. Because when I plug in negative 6 right here, 113 minus 6 is 107. And 107 plus 73 makes 180. We're good to go. Okay, right here we have alternate interior angles. Those are equal to each other. So, 15x, they're both acute angles. 15x plus 9 equals 16x plus 4. I'm going to subtract 15x to keep x positive. Then I'm going to subtract 4 and get x equals 5. I'm done there. Now I'm going to plug 5 in here and here. 15 times 5 is 75 plus 9 is 84. I want to double check my work, so I'm going to do 16 times 5, which is 80, plus 4 is 84. I'm good to go. 22, alternate exterior angles, which are also both obtuse, therefore equal. 11x plus 12 equals 13x minus 4. I'm going to subtract 11x to make the x's positive. I'm going to add 4 to get 16. Divide by 2, and I get 8. Now I'm going to plug it in here and here, and make sure I get the same answer for both. So 11 times 8 is 88, and 88 plus 12 is 100. As long as I get 100 for the other one, I'm good to go. So 13 times 8 is 104. Minus 4 is 100. I'm good to go. And that's it.